Hi, and welcome to Mr. Edwards' GCSE PE Revision Sessions. These videos give you the option to pause, freeze, and rewind the lessons at your own pace. The functions of the cardiovascular system in physical education. Within this video, we're going to look at the heart, the route the blood takes, the blood, the vessels, and their roles, and the blood and its role in the physical activity. The cardiovascular system. The cardiovascular system is made up of the heart, three types of blood, and the blood itself. The functions of the cardiovascular system are transporting, clotting, and temperature regulation. This diagram to the left shows the heart and the network of blood vessels that make up the CV system. The three main focuses, so transport, blood carried oxygen and nutrients to working muscles, it also carries away waste products, for example, carbon dioxide and lactic acid. These are vital during physical activity as the demand for oxygen increases. Another role is temperature regulation. This is done through the lumen of the blood vessels. When the body is hot, vasodilation, increase of blood flow to the skin surface, takes place. Clotting. Platelets in the blood form clots which seal open wounds. This protects the body against infections. During physical activity, the risk of cuts and grazes increases. Therefore, clotting is a vital point, a vital part to ensure that infection doesn't happen. The heart pumps blood to two destinations simultaneously. To the lungs, where it becomes oxygenated before returning to the heart, and to the rest of the body, where it becomes deoxygenated as it delivers oxygen to carriers to the muscles of the organs. The heart is made up of four chambers. The top two chambers, as you can see here, are the atria, here and here, and the bottom two are the ventricles, here and here. The left side of the heart deals with oxygenated blood, and the right, heart, right side of the heart deals with deoxygenated blood. Often in diagrams, the heart is the wrong way round. So the right hand side is actually the left hand side of the heart, and the left hand side is actually the right hand side of the, of the heart. Hopefully you can understand this. Here's a diagram of the heart. These are the th four, five key areas you need to know for each side of the heart. So if we start off and we're looking at the left hand side of the heart, so the left hand side, at the top is the aorta, followed by the pulmonary artery, pulmonary veins, left atrium, semi-lunar valve, bicuspid valve, left ventricle, septum, superior vena cava, right atrium, tricuspid valve, right ventricle, and inferior vena cava. Within your exam, you'll often get a diagram such as this, and they'll ask you to label different areas of the heart. They might not necessarily ask for all of them, however, it is good to know all of them for when they do ask. Heart key terms. Atria. This is the plural of atrium. There are two atria in the heart. These are the upper chambers of the heart where the blood enters. Ventricles. There are two ventricles in the heart. These are the lower chambers of the heart from where blood exits. Oxygenated blood. Blood containing a high concentration of oxygen and deoxygenated blood, blood containing a low concentration of oxygen. The route the blood takes through the heart. These are the various steps as the blood enters the heart and goes through the body. The first stage, blood returns from the body through the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. The deoxygenated blood enters the right atrium. Oxygenated blood then passes through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. Deoxygenated blood is pumped through pulmonary arteries to the lungs. The semi-lunar valves pre prevent blood re-entering the heart. Blood is oxygenated at the lungs. Oxygenated blood returns to the heart through the pulmonary ve veins. Oxygenated blood enters the left atrium of the heart. Oxygenated blood passes through the bicuspid valve and into the left ventricle. And oxygen blood is pumped through the aorta to the muscles and organs of the body. The semi-lunar valve prevents blood re-entering the heart. As you can see at the top, it's deoxygenated where the lines are blue. 
and when the blood is oxygenated by the lungs, it then becomes red. This is the same as what would happen with the blood. The top bits, there would be no oxygen because it would be deoxygenated blood. Towards the bottom, it would be oxygenated blood. Blood vessels and their roles in physical activity. There are three different areas of the blood vessels and their roles. The arteries. Arteries carry blood away from the heart. Arteries carry oxygenated blood. Artery blood pressure is high. The arteries have thick muscular walls. During exercise, the arteries restrict blood to an area that is not being used, e.g. the digestive system. Capillaries. Capillaries look like a mesh wrapped around the muscles and organs. Capillaries are very thin. They're one cell thick. Gases can diffuse through the walls of the capillaries. Blood becomes deoxygenated at the capillaries and capillaries are essential during physical activity because they allow oxygen to enter the muscles through diffusion. Veins carry blood back to the heart. Veins carry deoxygenated blood. Blood pressure is very low to prevent blood flowing the wrong way. Veins have many one-way pocket valves. Veins have thinner walls than arteries. Therefore, arteries carry blood away from the heart and they carry oxygenated blood. This is going off to the muscles. Capillaries, this is where the oxygen goes through the walls because they're one cell thick, diffuses through the walls and into the blood. This is the same process for deoxygenated blood. The deoxygenated blood will go through the capillary walls, out into the lungs and then will be breathed out. The veins carry blood back to the heart. So the veins carry deoxygenated blood. On diagrams, you will often see veins in blue and arteries in red. Red, oxygenated, blue, deoxygenated. Blood and its role in physical activity. Red blood cells contain hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is a substance that allows oxygen to be bound and carried. Red blood is crucial to all sports and physical activities. It ensures muscles have the oxygen to perform efficiently. Activities that are impacted the most by the work of the red blood cells are endurance events. White blood cells. White blood cells are part of the immune system. They travel in the blood to fight disease and infection. They are responsible for keeping athletes healthy, ensuring sportsmen can train and compete. Platelets. Platelets clot blood and scab around the site of an injury to seal wounds. This is crucial to stop exercise bleeding and to heal body quickly to prevent infection. This is important for sports performers as it will stop injuries becoming life-threatening. Ensuring sportsmen can train and compete. Thank you for listening to Mr. Edwards' GCSE PE revision videos. If you have any questions, feel free to email me on damianedwards at kingselbarsha.com. Cheers. Bye.